بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and welcome back to another episode of Al Quran but not just on the member or in the studio but also sharing our reflections with our brothers today really excited about, about this episode because we're talking about something that's very pertinent in our day-to-day -day lives and for that I have a question for you how many copies uh, of books do you think are sold uh, of self-help books are sold self-help books must be thousands people love reading those thousands more than thousands hundreds of thousands if not millions it's the likes of rich dad poor dad or think and grow rich and those kind of books and and you know what I'm talking about because a lot of us have read those books and listened to podcasts the likes of high performance podcasts or diary for CEO and stuff we've all come across these and the reason why is because we're all on that journey to grow and we all want to know how people have done it, those successful people have done it, so that we can implement those things in our lives. But what if I told you that we have something that's amongst our, uh, in, in our grasp, literally, uh, Brother Muhammad, <laughs> <laughs> that um, we open on a daily basis and we recite it and we don't have to pay hundreds and thousands of pounds of course fees and podcast fees and all of those to, to be able to learn from it. Sent. That's the Quran. I wonder how many copies of those have been sold. I know. Really. <laughs> Over 800,000, no, 800 million copies. SubhanAllah, 800, 800 million. million copies of the Quran. That, those are official figures. Imagine the unofficial figures, those ones sold on the streets in Mombasa and <laughs> <laughs> in Zanzibar. But um, yeah, so. The reason why self-help book because it's a book of guidance for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put down so many lessons practical lessons on how we can improve our lives ultimately it is the book of guidance for us Ahsant. and Allah tells us quite clearly in the Quran yahdi lillati hiya aqwam. it guides to that which is right we don't need to worry about which a self-help book is good and you know one contradicts the other no Allah says it's all in here just read it but not just with this tongue, but with this heart as well. Ahsantum, ahsantum. And you know, in the, we live in the time of AI, right? Artificial intelligence. And sometimes when we're talking about things or we're, when we're searching for particular types of people or, or businesses, then all of a sudden it'll throw up all these different podcasts and books and stuff. Now, with the Quran, similarly, or much better than that, Quran, Allah's intelligence uh, comes to play. AI. AI, exactly. And I, I have a question for you and for you as well. Like, has it ever happened to you? You're talking about something and it's occupying your mind. And all of a sudden you open the Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers it for you or shows you the, the guidance for it. Ahsant. Whenever, whenever in life I'm stuck, not istikhara, but just generally I want to look for guidance. This is the book that I open. And always Allah will guide me. Such a beautiful, such a beautiful uh, thing and we were actually together in Karbala doing Arbain hmm. and this happened to me and it was like goosebump feeling because we went uh, we went to the Haram together I think it was on Arbain day that's right uh, and uh, you know how crazy busy it is and you go inside you say Labbaik Ya Hussain and then you go in and you're thrown out as quickly <laughs> as you came in and Inside there, I lost, I lost them. So I thought, okay, we, I stood at our meeting place and I thought, let me, let me see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to tell me. And at that time, I was going through a few questions in my mind, thinking, ah, can I do this? I was just questioning my uh, ability to uh, hit those, uh, uh, those uh, things that I wanted to uh, achieve in life. And then I opened the Quran and all of a sudden, Surah Luqman. And it is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that He's made everything in the heavens and the earth subservient to us. So literally we can take those, use those what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created to make sure that we achieve those things that we want to achieve. Sense. So AI. <laughs> Allah's intelligence. Yeah. Now the question is that the, the, the purpose for, uh, for our existence is that we can grow and we want to improve and we want to be successful in everything that we do. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us about success? That's brilliant. The problem with us is that whenever we see someone who's made the millions, or who's, who's dri driving a, a Lambo or a Ferrari, we're like, he's so successful, man. You know, he's made a million and he's only 30. He's so successful. But Allah is telling us that's not the criteria for success. And in the Quran, in Surah Al-Shams, 
Allah tells us who is the successful one. Who is the successful one in Mount Surah Shams, verses 9 and 10. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Qad aflaha man zakkaha wa qad khaba man dassaha. Successful indeed is the one who purifies it. Yani the soul. And the one who corrupts it fails. So here, true success. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us in very plain and simple language here. There's not, there's no, there's probably definitely uh, apparent and hidden meanings and stuff, but it's so clear. Successful is the one who purifies it. Yani the soul. Question, how do we purify our soul? What a brilliant question, Ronald. So, naturally, if Allah is telling us that the way to be successful is to purify it, yani our souls, then he must have given us the recipe of how to purify it in this Quran. And there's many different ways. One of them in Surah Al-Mu'minun, we recite, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says, successful are the believers. Which believers? How are they successful? الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ خَاشِعُونَ They are the ones who in their salah, they show pure khushu and humility. And when we can get our salah right, then Allah will start to elevate us in our levels of success. Why salah, Imran Ali? Salah, there's that famous hadith that we've all come across. In qubilat qubilat ma siwaha, in ruddat ruddat ma siwaha. If your prayers are accepted, everything else is accepted. If your prayers are rejected, then everything else is rejected. And ultimately, salah is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's time. And, and that, is, that is the time where we need to focus and give our all uh, uh, into our prayers. But there's so many other things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran as well. Uh, uh, there's so many akhlaqi traits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us we must possess. So maybe we need to identify these things, what, what we're good at and what we can improve and focus on those things and slowly, slowly improve. But also, zakah, zakah, similar. So zakah meaning purification, we also do something else to purify, and that's zakat. Yeah. So when we give sadaqah, it's a type of purification. Of course, the zakat that we give is supposed to purify our wealth. But when given with the correct intention, the point of giving this zakat is, number one, it's not our money. We've been given custodianship of this money. It's not ours, we have to understand that. And when we give on the outward, Allah will help us purify, not just our wealth, but also our souls, inshallah. Ahsantum, ahsantum. So just finally to end with uh, a couple of things to bear in mind when we're reciting these verses. Qad aflaha man zakaha. So you see the dal there, qad, it appears twice. So dal with the sukun uh, is one of the qutub jad letters, the bouncy letters, or famously known as the qalqala letters. So if, ha if it has a sukun on it, then you bounce on it. Qad. So it won't be qad, you bounce on the dal. Qad. So, but not, not enough that it's another fatha. So it won't be qada. It will be qad. So just enough, you bounce on that. And the second thing, the letter ha. So you have aflaha and zakaha. So we need to differentiate between those two. This aflaha, ha, comes from the middle part of the throat where we're capturing the air and exhaling. Ha, aflaha. As if you want to clean your glasses, ha, and then you clean those. Uh, you, you pronounce the letter ha like that. And the next one, zakaha, is like the English letter H. So nice and simple, nothing fancy, ha. And that's how you know Imran Lee is an optician, <laughs> works at, with opticians because <laughs> cleaning the glasses. <laughs> that's not the right way to clean your glasses. But <laughs> <laughs> with that, uh, this was, we really enjoyed ourselves talking about how to uh, purify our souls. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he can purify all of us through, inshallah, manifesting this book, the Holy Quran, within our lives. Barakallahu li wa lakum, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.